Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And today on this episode of Real Talk Christian, we are talking about a hot topic issue that the world and the church is currently facing. And that issue is the LGBTQ plus community, but more specifically, asking the question, can a person be both gay and a Christian, or does this conversation not even matter. It's going to be a fun ride, so let's do it. Thank you for joining us at Real Talk Christian, a place where real Christians talk about real issues impacting the community and the world as it pertains to Christians. Now here are your hosts, Mark Hyde and Chris Fuller. What's going on, Mark? How are you doing today? Dude, I am doing good, bro. It is a good day. It's a dreary day outside. It's, it's kind of cold, kind of rainy. I kind of like it, though. It's fall. Fall's coming in, and, and it's just going to be nice weather. I love fall. All right, so here's a fun question for you, Fuller. All right. When does fall begin for you? Fall begins when it starts getting below 60 degrees at night. So it has nothing to do with Starbucks and pumpkin spice lattes. Like that mean, does not bring in the fall. The day they dropped the pumpkin spice, <laughs> I went and got me some. I'm not going to lie. No, you went there fast. Like, it was delish. Like, you... Yeah, delish. I said, I said it. It was delish. Okay, who's the youth pastor now? I've been hanging you out. You just said delish. I've been hanging out with your teens too you much. You said delish. So, but either way... Hey, speaking of coffee... Speaking of coffee... What kind of coffee are we drinking today? Dude, well... We are drinking our Montague, Michigan blend straight from the book Nook and Java Shop. Mm-hmm. It's that little spot mm-hmm. I go to on vacation. We talked about, I think, in episode two. And if you can't tell, we also have Brandon Soche back Brandon with Soche. us. There's there's the, the coffee sip sip. But yes, we're drinking coffee all the way from my favorite coffee shop in Montague, Michigan. I always love drinking this coffee. It's so smooth it's and so smooth, rich. Man. You know what we need to get fuller? We need someone to start sending us coffee we for need, this podcast. We need coffee from our listeners. We need coffee from the listeners. So, so if people Send are wondering, your favorite coffee. So, if people are wondering, hey, what's the best way I can support RTC? Can I get a sticker for my car? Nope. Can I get a button? Nope. Which you can get all those, but we need some caffeine. Yeah, we we need our we, coffee. We need we need coffee. We can't bring you podcasts without coffee. I mean, it no, just we doesn't really happen. Can't. We really can't. But today, we are having a really, really tough conversation. And since we're having a tough conversation, we wanted to bring in the... The big guns. Uh, well, I was going to say the expert, but that's probably not the right thing for this this conversation. But more the fact of the... the buffer? The, the, the man who was smarter than both of us combined. Well, How about that? That's probably true. <laughs> that's probably true. We got Brandon oh, Soche back with us in studio to help us with this conversation. What's up, Soche? Hey. How you doing, buddy? Glad to be here. You ready for the world's hardest conversation? You better believe it. You coffee or tea? It. Coffee. Coffee. There you go. That's an easy conversation. That like, was a very easy wait, conversation. Wait. I mean, what kind of coffee? Are we talking like Maxwell House or like... Okay, know. if it's a Maxwell House versus like a good tea, then probably tea. Probably. Yeah, tea. I would think everybody would choose that. Our church drank Mac- Maxwell's House for a couple of years until I said, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. Nope. It's just... I mean, we're still not drinking, you know, we're not we're not drinking bad and bougie coffee. Like we're not drinking the good stuff, but we're at least drinking Folgers Black Silk. We're not drinking the uh, so it's at least the an upgrade stuff. No, uh, yeah, we're a small church. We're a small church. We don't want the bad and bu- I, I love that phrase, bad and bougie. You know, God and Gucci. <laughs> you know, I love the preacher and sneaker phrases that Delish. they use all the time. So if you don't know preacher and the sneakers. Yeah, do you guys know Preachers and Sneakers, that Instagram account? You have mentioned it several times. There's a new one called um, P- Profits and Watches. Profits J.D. And- Greer, president of the SBC, has actually been <laughs> featured for his watch that he wears. So there's a new, so I, There you go, Brandon. I'll have to look. I, it, I think it's Profits and Watches or something like that, but it's these pastors and their high-end watches. So yeah. all right, cool. I, I'm rocking my twenty dollar Walmart watch. I got my uh, <laughs> my <laughs> eBay Fitbit over here. Yeah. I got the tick watch. The tick I, tick watch. I'm not wearing a watch right now. You're but right. I have the Galaxy Gear S4. There you go. Oh man. Okay. So, there, well. Okay. Well, hey, today's conversation, we are having a hard conversation. We're talking about specifically the LGBTQ plus community, which yes, that's a mouthful. But we are going to have this conversation. We want to try to do this in the most respectful way possible. We want to ask the questions of what does the Bible say? Because as Christians, that's where our source of truth right. lies. 
Um, so we want us to figure out what does the Bible say about God, about his personality, his nature, his character? What does it say about our own sexuality and how we're supposed to live? Mm-hmm. Um, but most, in, I don't want to say most importantly, but then the kind of the driving question that we'll try to end it with is simply, okay, so how do Christians interact with the gay community? Um, especially with us being in South Bend. I mean, I don't think there's any question. We have Mayor Pete. Um, Pete Buttigieg. First, Buttigieg, Buttigieg. Uh, he's, uh, I think he was the first openly gay mayor in all of America. Was he? Um, if not the first, he's definitely, I mean, everyone knows his name now because they're right. running for the presidency. Right. And, and, and South Bend is a very, very liberal city as well. Mm-hmm. So this is an issue that we have to deal with it pretty much on the daily. But um, before we get in, I do want to make this disclaimer, though, before we get to the conversation. Um, three quick disclaimers. One is we are not at all trying to just hate on the community for the LGBTQ+. That's This is not what the purpose of this is. We just want to have the conversation of what does God actually say about this topic? Second disclaimer is we're going to have a healthy dialogue, but keep scripture, the foundation in all of our conversation, try to keep our opinions out of it. And the last one, we're not spreading hate. We're not trying to hurt anybody, but let's be honest. If the truth disagrees with our choices in any way, shape or form, which I'll, I'll just throw this disclaimer in there for myself. Fuller had to come at me some pretty hard stuff the other day. All out of love. It's all out of love, but he was not wrong, and I was the moron. So when the truth disagrees, or when the truth, yeah, when the truth disagrees with what we're trying to do or what we think, it is going to hurt no matter what. That's right. kind of just what where we go with there. Um, but let me open it up to you guys, uh, Fuller and Soche. So this is an issue that's taken over by storm, I would say, in the last maybe decade at mm-hmm. least. Not, maybe not even. Maybe not even. So why is this such an issue today? So, Shay, you got something or you want me to go? (laughs) It's not an issue. So, I think the issue comes, well, there's several things. Um, One, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when our parents were our age, uh, homosexuality was not as open as it is in our day and age, in this generation. Um, So, I think that's one reason why it's become such a, hot topic issue is it was never an issue to be it, well, yeah well it, it was there but it mm. was never talked about or discussed it, there was no light ever shined upon it nobody was there was no gay pride parades um so i think that's one of the things why it's such a hot topic today um it's because people are identifying as as i'm gay that's what i am it's my identity uh and i think um Christians are still stuck on the dealing with that it's a sin. You know, biblically, it's, it, you know, God speaks out against it, uh, but they're not dealing with the issue that um, people who practice homosexuality are identifying as that sin. So it's hard to separate it when you identify it as it. You know, it's yeah. for, for me, it's easy to go, <clears throat> um, Hey, Chris, you're you're lying, so that makes you a liar. Oh, well, I'm not going to – I don't want to identify as a liar, so I'm just going to stop lying and stop doing that sin. To me, that's mm-hmm. easy because I'm not identifying as that. But for somebody who finds their identity in something, it's much harder to separate it. So uh, the Christians are still, still dealing with the fact that it's wrong. Well, they're not dealing with the fact that it's actually um, being identified as um, that right. that's that person now. They're not, they're, it's, they're not separate. Yeah. Know? So, so what I'm hearing you say is the fact of, A, it was, it wasn't an issue that was out in the open public. I mean, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, it was culturally unacceptable to even come out as, as right. gay or, or even trans or any of these things. Or even now have a baby very, out of wedlock. I mean, exactly. Was. <laughs> I mean, it was just a different day and age, but also it's hard to have a conversation when someone's identity is wrapped up mm-hmm. in yeah. this conversation. Cause that's who they, not, not, now you're not just dealing with a sin. You're dealing with someone who they actually right are and believed to be what you got so no yeah i think that is probably why it has become th- i mean let's just face it this isn't a a hot button issue this is probably the issue for okay. the church right now this is probably the issue that we are facing uh both you know we're looking at religious liberty uh issues are in jeopardy we're looking at um you know all kinds of different issues that the church is facing. And I think it all is revolving around this. And I, you know, Christians, we're not the first ones to ask that question of why is it this issue? Right. It seems like a, you know, 
if if I were to choose the issue that I would want the church to to have to stand on and die on that hill, this wouldn't be the issue I would choose. Yeah, because it seems strange. It seems um, I it seems like it's it. I think at first glance it can seem like it's not that big of a deal. It's not pivotal, but in the grand scheme, I think like Chris said, I think I think that. Is the like the reason why it's become that hot button issue is because there is uh, the LGBTQ community is claiming that this is the identity that I like this sexuality is a the core of who I am or it's at least in the core of who I am and so yeah for for a Christian to say no that's sinful and that's wrong is to say, so you're saying everything about me is wrong. Right. You're saying the core of who I am is wrong. And that is a really h- harsh thing to say. Right. And um, so, yeah, it, it becomes a really big issue. It blows up everywhere when you when you look at it. I mean, uh, that's why this has become such a big issue, because of that narrative of this is my identity. Um, but I think also a reason why it's such a big deal is uh, we live in a culture where, um, my, my mind just went blank. Uh, All right, you 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 think about it, Mark. Yeah, you guys, what's on. your what's your what's your stance on it? What where do you? What's see? my stance, or why is it such a hot topic issue? Where's your stance on why it's a hot topic issue? Oh, well, multiple reasons. One, I think it's a hot topic issue because um, I don't want to sound like the 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 bleeding conservative. Republican, but media is shoving it down our throats, yeah. and yeah, and whether whether you agree that's right or wrong, it's it's just a fact of the matter. I mean, uh, it used to be the fact of LGBT was something that was very much happened behind closed doors; it didn't come into society. Whereas now we have entire Netflix series based off of gay characters. Um, I mean, Will and Grace, which used to be a very that was primetime TV. That was primetime TV, but that was very of uh, that was kind of a weird show back in the day. It was very it was controversial. It was very controversial. Yeah. Whereas, whereas today, it's actually pretty clean compared right. to what a lot of stuff is coming out. Right. So yeah. a, a lot of our the the, the, the I don't want to say the media, but but media outlets are, are very much pushing this agenda. Um, brands are starting to put for for Pride Month. You go across Instagram and right. Facebook, it's like, what happened? Did did the flood just happen again? I see rainbows everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like I, everyone is starting to. to, to that's the to, other to issue I was thinking of was you know, the the people claim that uh, some people claim that Christians won't let this issue go. Mm. Like we just keep harping on homosexuality when really, it's. It's not that we keep harping on it; it's that it's everywhere in the culture. We're right. confronted with it. All We're the confronted time. with it. So therefore, since we are confronted with it, we have to have a stance and have to have an answer right. for it. And I think it's also the fact of it's it's in our backyards now. Like let's be honest, mm-hmm. it, it is in our backyards. Um, Americans generally are pretty good about it. if it's not happening in America, we don't care about it. Right. Whereas now it's it's in our backyards. It's in our communities. Um, specifically from the church standpoint, there are many church and denominations that have come out to say the. The understanding of what we see in the Bible is not really what the understanding is. That's an old time, old time thing. So therefore, even in the church, it's it's totally okay because well, that's how we're God divided. Knows you. We're divided as right. a church. I mean, we, there's actually a church um, that I pass when I take my, my my kids to preschool, and they have doors that are on the side of their building, and it's the entire color of the rainbow in every door, and it says our doors and hearts are open to everyone. Right. And and part of the conversations, it sounds like okay, if so, if I'm against LGBT. I must hate everybody. Um, I think that's kind of where the the rubber meets the road is the fact of if you step out and speak out about anything that anybody disagrees with, therefore you must be a bigot. You must hate people, this, that, and the other. But, but honestly, I think the biggest reason why it's an issue today and it wasn't 20 years ago was yes, it's entered into the public specters. It's entered into the public sphere. You cannot get away from it. I mean, even the relig- even in the uh, political sphere now with mayor Pete, right? I mean, his platform for the longest time. I mean, we still don't know what the man's policies are on some things, but he's running on, for lack of a better word, a gay platform. That's the platform he's running on. And so we're constantly having to to, to figure out, okay, what do we do with this situation? Uh, but let's jump in, though, because the I don't want to have the conversation of, is there a gay gene? I don't want to have the conversation of, of the, the mental ic- intellectual. If we're Christians, right. we're supposed to be people of the book, reading the Bible. What does God have to say about this issue? Um, 
So let's let's talk first, though, if it's okay with you guys, just about what does the Bible actually say about God and love and marriage and all these different things. Well, I think that uh, <clears throat> the the main thing that is said is that God is love and God loves, um, and the other counterpoint is everyone is a sinner, right from from birth, from way back back way on back. I think I think uh it's important for us to recognize that yeah, God is love. The Bible says uh you know, if you l- claim you love God and you don't love your neighbor, you you don't know God because God is love. Mm-hmm. But the it's not what God does. It's it's right. who he is. But uh there is um the the opposite is not true. Love is not God. Right. God is love, and so therefore God gets to define what love is. Right. We don't define some idea of what we think love is and then say, well, that's what God this is. is what love is, so that's what God is, right. if God is love. Like, God is love, not love is God. Right. Um, that's, but also I would say that, you know, like you said, uh, about thinking about what does the Bible say about God and, and love, and that God is gracious towards all sinners. Mm-hmm. Every human being, like you said, Chris, is a is a fallen son or daughter of Adam and Eve, and we are dead in our sin, right. and God is gracious to us. And it's the classic John three sixteen verse where, you know, while we were still sinners, God loved the world and sent Jesus to die for the world. Well, Not that, to condemn the world, Rome, but to redeem Romans it. Romans 5, 8 says that right. exact thing. Right, right. That, but God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died right. for us. Right. And, and we have... And God, in the beginning, like you're, you're, you asked about marriage, you know, the, the scripture talks about that in the beginning, God created them male and female. Right. Jesus reiterates this. He talks about marriage is male and female. And that, um, and we, you know, God has created the world in such a way that he gives us clues as to what life is supposed to be like by looking at what he's made, you know, we have bodies, they work a certain way. And God has said in his word, marriage is a male and a female. Uh, and it says that, you know, what's the purpose of marriage? The purpose of marriage is to make more people. Like right. he told Adam and Eve to, to cleave to one another and to go and, and replenish the earth, right. to populate the earth with little images of God. That's what people are. And so that's the purpose of marriage. That's the purpose of romance and love is besides having fun. <laughs> right. It, it's, it's, it's fun and it's enjoyable, but it's got, it's not just that. I, I think, honestly, I think that's another reason why this issue has become what it has is I think it goes deeper. I don't want to get off too, too far from where we're trying to go with the biblical case for the positive, but I think we have a culture where ever since, um, the the advent of no fault divorce and the pill, uh, we have become birth a society control pill, just birth control pill. Yeah, uh, we have become a society that's increasingly separated sex from procreation. Right, and because now you can do one without the other. Right, and, and on the flip side, you can have kids without sex too. Right, I mean that's a and that's so, a whole other issue. And topic. Right, <laughs> but God, but God ordained but yes, that. Right to be a connection that sex equals children. Right. So I got a backup question. Cause I've had this question asked to me from, from various people. They say, okay, so yeah, that's the way God originally. Sure. Okay. Let's say God, that's the way God originally created it where Adam and Eve, yep, they need to have babies. So obviously you need a dude and you need a woman to have that in today's culture. We don't need that anymore. So therefore does what God say about sex and marriage and kids, does that just not apply anymore? Because we have technology. We 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 can have surrogates. We can do snowflake babies. We can we can do petri tree babies. Hey, heck, we can even clone people now. Yeah. So does does it? Uh, well, are all those points my, are void now. My scripture verse, and I don't know. I can't reference where it's at, but it says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. So that means that what was said two thousand, four thousand, six thousand years ago. That's Hebrews thirteen eight. By the way. Thank you. You got it. But. Uh, it's he's the same, right? He doesn't change, and and God, yeah, God doesn't change. And Jesus said that not one 
jot or tittle, not the tiniest little mark of God's word will pass away. Right. Uh, the heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will not pass away. A lot of people will try and say, well, yeah, God was against homosexuality in the Old Testament. Yep. Right. Yep. But Jesus never mentions it. And and the New Testament God is different. He doesn't care about all that stuff anymore. But um, he said that he didn't come to He, he didn't come to, to abolish the, law, the wall. He right. came fulfill to fulfill it. it. Right, exactly. And he does reiterate the the abiding validity and continuation of marriage and so, marriage between a man and a woman. So to kind of th- bring things more full circle right you know in the beginning we we all three agreed that um in today's culture um homosexuality is not a sin it is an identity and not saying that in it's the, not a, in the culture, the, in the culture. Today's it's culture. A, not a yep. sin it's an identity mm-hmm. so uh how do we separate that how do we separate that for the community? How do Christians deal with that? I mean, obviously, we've talked about God is love and that we're all sinners. So uh, that, you know, throughout creation, we're supposed to procreate. We're supposed to be between a man and a woman. The two should be joined. No man shall bring them apart, break them apart. We talked about these things. So what does it look like, though? How do we um, deal with that identity issue? And why is there an identity issue? Um, I think that's a really important question, and it's a difficult question, um, but I think it relates to um, the the whole issue of where does homosexuality come from? Um, you know, a lot of people want to say, and I think, you know, the, it is a biblical truth to say that all sin uh, separates us from God. Right. Um, and that I think all every sin... Christian would agree with that. Right, and that all sin is equally offensive to God in the sense that it deserves uh, condemnation. Right. Right. And I, you know, I was going to say this a little bit ago, but you know, the Bible says God is love, but the Bible also says that God is holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, uh, I learned this a few years back, but uh, you know, in Hebrew, if you ever notice in the old Testament, Hebrew doesn't have like, they use parallelism and repetition right. for emphasis. Mm-hmm. With, they didn't you know, have in the, exclamation points. They didn't have exclamation points. Right. They didn't or have italicized. All the yeah, they didn't have emphasis, bold emphasis and italics. They like didn't have any way to emphasize things in their and so in their culture they would use repetition right. and parallelism. You see it all over the Psalms with these parallel phrases being spoken for emphasis. But when God is described by the uh, the prophet Isaiah, he is described as holy, holy, holy. That's three times holy. That's like holy in bold italics, underlined, and five exclamation points after it. That's like saying holy. There is no, you know, there is, and and in, there's no other attribute of God that's repeated three times like that. Right. God is, and holy means he's set apart. He is pure. He is completely untainted and and so you know he uh he is holy and he is just and um he is the righteous creator and i want to i want to read a scripture thinking about this identity um and thinking about where does homosexuality come from right uh because if we think about you know all sin is an affront to a holy 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 god but that doesn't mean that all sin is the same. Right. And it doesn't mean that all sin is equal. All sin separates, but not all sin is equal. So so what do you mean by not all sins are Well, not I equal? can tell you like in Leviticus 18:22 uh he t- says it's an abomination to a male lying or it says you shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. He doesn't say that about lying. So it, he, it, there is a separate, he, he emphasizes that there's something, it's an abomination there, unto the Lord. Well, and even to say that not all sin has either, not all sin has the same consequence. Right. You know, there are earthly consequences that are different for different sins. Mm-hmm. There are, it is, you know, Jesus, a lot, some people say, you know, well, Jesus said, if you're angry at somebody, you've, you've murdered them in your heart. Right. But that doesn't mean it's okay to just go ahead and murder them. Right. 
See, the, well, the you've thought, already done it in your heart. So. The thought is evil, and it is sin. Right. But the act is worse. Right. To kill this person is worse than to think about killing them. Right. And and uh, uh, though the thought does count, mm-hmm. you know, and it matters. It's still um, a sin. But also, not all sin is equal in the origin of that sin. And I want to read um, Romans 1, uh, a pretty extended passage, but he talks about, uh, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. And therefore, therefore means because of that, this happens. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. And for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for that for those that are contrary to nature and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done and they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness evil, covetousness, and there's a long list of full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and maliciousness. Um, but what I wanted to point out about this passage is this, uh, these exchanged natural relations for unnatural or contrary to nation to nature relations are used. I think Paul is using this as an example of a twisting that comes as a result of rejecting the creator. And so when you see this homosexual quote unquote identity, it is a result of a rejecting an exchange taking saying, I don't want God, the creator to be the the king over me. I'm not going to give thanks to him. And instead I'm going to worship the creature. And then there's a twisting that happens. Because when you look at your body, when I look at my body as a man, I know it's not meant for another man. Mm -hmm. I know that that's true because the creator created it that way. But if I reject the creator and I say, I don't want that, I don't want this creator, then I, my whole identity does become wrapped up in my, I'm going to determine what I use my body for. I'm going to determine what I want to do with myself. Yeah, I think we we naturally, as as we are born, we have already rejected the Creator. Right. Because I look at, uh, there's a show, and I'm trying to remember what it's called. I am Jasmine, or I am something with a J. Jazz. I'm Jazz. jazz. That's yeah. it, right. So this kid is, he was a boy becoming a female. Am I correct in saying that, Brandon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I could see as as adults, uh, we could say, yeah, I reject the Creator, and I'm going to wrap myself in this sin, and that twisting, that twisting that you're talking about. But uh, it's, I think it's natural to say that from the beginning, our minds are already twisted. Yeah. And, right. And that's why it happens in children. That's why we have um, homosexuality going on with kids. Um, because we're naturally twisted and it takes God to untwist us and to set our minds right. Would right. you agree with that? I would agree. And, and I think, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I think that the whole issue is got a deeper root of an entire society. Biblically, we can understand why, but an entire society that's increasingly rejecting the creator. Right. And increasingly oh, yeah. saying, I want nothing to do with Openly. this so-called 
Right. And I think that's another reason why the issue has become what it has become in an increasingly secular state, right. increasingly secular culture, where we don't want God in our... We, it, he, it talks about they refuse to acknowledge God. Right. They didn't even want God... They didn't even want to acknowledge him. They didn't even want to think about God. Mm-hmm. And we live in a culture where that's pretty much the case. Oh, yeah. I mean, prayers out of schools, no Bibles, and, you and know, Bible reading in school. They're taking down Ten Commandments outside of courthouses. I mean, you can see that they are, as a society, we are definitely turning away from, from the Creator. Right. And I think I think that Romans 1 is saying that, you know, the classic, which came first, the chicken or the egg— Romans 1 is saying it's the rejection of God that comes first. Right. That's the chicken. And the egg is rampant homosexuality. Right. I think that's what Romans 1 is saying. Well, and murders and everything else that's right. going on in our society. So I got a follow-up question because cause I'm, I'm listening to you guys talk and I'm trying to, to, to process everything. I got I got two questions, actually. The first question then, so so just making sure I'm clear, you would say that homosexuality is only a issue because we reject the Creator. Right. So, would you say that someone can or cannot be born gay or straight? I think uh, that someone, uh, given that every person is a fallen son of Adam and Eve, son or daughter of Adam and Eve, then that we are born with this um, animosity towards the Lord, a sin nature, and so, and I think we're all born with a natural bent towards some kind of sin. I think uh, we are all born with a bent towards some kind of sin. And so I I struggle with the thought. Uh, so I, I, could, I could probably, given a situation where I'm talking to a person, I've had this conversation with people before, um, you know, I, I could probably accept that someone has felt the urge, the, the same sex attraction from as far as they, as long as they can remember. And I could even accept maybe that that is their natural disposition to feel that way. Uh, because, you know, I have a natural disposition to do other kinds of sins, not that kind of sin. But it's my, I mean, that is my sinful natural bent, right? But just because I have a sinful natural bent doesn't mean that is the way I'm supposed to do things. Because God, uh, God the Creator tells me things to do with with or without those sinful natural bent. So so let's get this personal then. Is there something that you naturally struggle with where you could say, yes, I could live in that reality or no, I can choose to follow God? Yeah. I mean, oh, you know, I would all I, I was listening to a guy talking about this issue and talking about Romans one. And one of the things he says is, you know, there are lots of sins, um, one of the issues with the homosexual um, issue is, you know, every sin that I struggle with, or most most sins that most people struggle with, it's a excess. That's what the sin is. It's a sin that's taking a natural thing that's good and wanting it in excess. Okay. Like, for example, gluttony is a sin. Why are you looking at me when you're saying that? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm just saying, no. Uh, gluttony is a sin, but eating is natural, and it's good, and it's necessary. It's necessary. But it's when you take it to the excess that it becomes sinful. Okay. We, we had because this conversation. Because it's, de- it's deadly. A few, mm-hmm. few podcasts you know, ago. Yep. Uh, my natural attraction to women is natural and good. If and not, I, think, I think Marianne likes that. Right. Yeah, I am good. attracted to <laughs> my wife. probably good. And I am attracted to women, which is a good thing, because without natural attraction from a male to a woman, the species ends, right? Right. And um, Could you imagine that if Adam saw Eve and went, nah. Meh. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, bro. But you take that, that, that good desire and you take it to an excess, and then it becomes a lustful desire for all women, Right, that's when it becomes sinful. Right, but what I what the the there is a different there is a difference between a natural God uh, a God honoring desire that's taken to excess, even lying. We want our 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 reputation. We want um, we want P 
peace between people. That's a good desire. But when we lie to maintain reputation or maintain peace, that's taking it to an excess. Um, but homosexuality is, is inherently twisted. It's not a God-honoring desire. Romans 1 says it's, it's a twisted desire. It's a desire they ought not. They're desiring what they Shouldn't ought not there. to desire. And so there's a difference in a desire taken to excess and a twisted desire. And so I think um, I would push back against, so, uh, in a loving way, I would push back and say, are you sure you were born that way? Or is it, because most homosexuals that I've talked to, I've talked to quite a few, would say they, they can remember a time when it shifted. Or at least they can say, the only urges I've ever had were for, were for you know, the same sex or whatever. Um, but my little boy, Gideon, he, he's 10 months and he doesn't have any urges. You know, he's like, there's no way to know that he was born one way or another because he doesn't remember and he doesn't, you know. And so I think to say you're born that way, I think is a little bit of a reach. But I do say I could sympathize with someone saying, but this is my natural uh, bent. This is what I struggle with. Cause, because we all deal with certain things. Like, I mean, I've always dealt with anger. Still do. Um, not as much. I've, I've, I've controlled a lot of it. But my addict, I have a very addictive personality. And that's something, that's a demon I rest. Yeah, yeah don't, don't disagree with me, Fuller. I mean, it's, <laughs> I do. And that's why I make sure I stay away from certain things. Because, I mean, the Bible says, do not be controlled by anything on the outside. Right. We talked about it. That's why I, yep. I, yes, I drink coffee. Yes, I love it. But I also drink decaf and I have cold turkey days. Yep. Just to make sure I'm not controlled by, by my desires. Um, and, and so this, this is something that is a very big conversation today is, um, and, and this might be a bit of a segue is when people have these conversations, um, cause, cause I, I have a lot of, lot of friends, relationship connections who who are gay, openly yep, gay. Yep. Um, I even know people who, who are transgender as well. And they will say things, well, this is who I am. This is, I mean, you know, we can have the, the conversation of just because it feels right. Doesn't mean it is right. Cause I could really want to kill you. So Shay, right. But if, it's probably not good if I act on that urge. Like yeah. you know, just cause I want to do something doesn't mean I should, I don't want to kill you, but Marianne, I do not want to kill him. I don't, I like him. I like my <laughs> we office. We just want to hug him. He's I like, like my, I like bear. my office buddy. <laughs> um, but no, but a lot of people will say that, the, that, that conversation with the homosexuality where this is just who I am in the same exact breath as if someone says, well, I'm, I'm just naturally white. I'm naturally Asian. I'm naturally, That's just who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm naturally African American or Finnish or, I mean, Canadians basically just Northern USA, but you know, whatever. Micah, but, but <laughs> Micah Howell. Um, but p- people have that conversation right. of this is who I am in the same way that you're white, and the same person that that like they're black, same right. way as they're Asian. I'm gay. It's just who I am. It's it's how God made me to be. Right? So let me segue from your segue here a little bit. All right. So we've talked about, you know, okay, this is what the Scripture says. This is how God feels about it. But. And I'm going to ask you one question. I'm going to ask Mark one question. Oh, I've been sitting Brand- here doing the conversation, and then Brandon man. One question. All right. So, Mark, I'm going to ask you first. Okay. I just yeah. I just decided that. All right. So <clears throat> we've talked about how how this is all. You know, it is what it is. It's wrong. I mean, it's and it's abomination. It's not natural. Um, what does that mean to somebody who's not saved? Is it even a topic that uh, Christians? should bring up to the world that, Hey, you're gay and that's a sin no. or, or is it, uh, is it something else that we need to be focusing on over that? And yeah, no, no, no I, I know what you're saying. So the question is, is should we lead with hey, you're gay, be straight before you're a Christian? Right. Mm. Um, honestly, I would say that is a, a very skewed version of the prosperity gospel. Mm-hmm. That's mm. a very, that's actually idol worship. We're idling heterosexuality over mm. homosexuality, over even salvation. Cause if we say, you know, to someone like, hey, if, if you just follow Jesus, you know, God will make you straight. Well, now the goal of a person's life is no longer to be a son and daughter of God. It's no longer straight. it's no longer to pursue a relationship with the Father. It's no longer to live in the creation that God intended for us to do. Now it's just simply be straight. Right. Right. And and that's that's not the gospel. The right. gospel is is 
Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You'll be given a new identity, and you are now a son, a daughter, co-heir to the throne. And that that identity issue, that's big. Right. And that is that is the core of the gospel, I believe. And, I, and, and it's, it's what you said. That's the core of the gospel. Right. And, I, and, and that could be... I don't, I don't, antidote's not the right word, but it's the fact of if you're looking for a true identity... Um, and I'll just be very transparent. We like to use the word. I, I'm going to be real. We like to use that word in, in I mean, small groups in talk. church world. Well, and it all is that. real talk, Christian. Yeah. But That's right. my identity has been shaken to the core this last last little bit. Of if someone would ask me, Mark, who are you, or what's going on, my answer would always first start with, I'm a youth pastor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. But is that really is that really what my identity is, or is are those just the roles that I'm allowed to play? Right. And I almost wonder if we put too much stakehold as as straight individuals on mm. what we do versus who are we, rather than oh, so so Mark, what's your identity wrapped up in? More than before, I'm a youth pastor. Before I'm a husband. Before I'm a dad. Before I'm a friend. It's a uh, and this is something that um, a very close mentor and counselor has been working with me with is first and foremost, Mark, you're you're a child of God. That's where everything comes out of. Mm-hmm. And then there's a um, she's a slam poet. She's a beautiful writer. Um, she actually wrote a book. I'll put it in the show notes. It's called uh, Gay Girl, Good God. One of the best books I ever read. And she was someone who was full fledged in the LGBT culture community. Um, ha- I mean. She said that when she saw a dude, nothing happened. But if she saw a girl, she'd freak out. Like, like she was very much had the urges and everything. And, um, and she, she wrote a follow-up article about the whole heterosexual, um, idol worship that we have as, as Christians. But, but she even said that first and foremost, I'm not straight or gay. And this is where she had to wrestle with, but first and foremost, I'm I am a creation of God who is loved by him. Amen. And everything else stemmed from that. And yeah. she said that when I, if I put, I'm, I'm gay first and then I'm a Christian, well, then my priorities are out of line. If, right. if she says, well, I'm, I'm straight first and then I'm a Christian, well, my right. priorities are out of line. And, and, right. and I don't want to say that just because someone follows after Jesus, that same sex attraction will go away. Uh, where we still wrestle with the flesh. We still wrestle with everything. And, and so someone once asked me, a teenager specifically said, so Mark, if someone wants to follow Jesus, let's say they do follow Jesus, but they still struggle with, with being gay. Is that a problem? I said, honestly, no, because that's, they're wrestling with their sin. You're, you're, you're diving into my second question for so Oh man, but I want the second question. <laughs> so segue. It. So, uh, well, uh, let me, let me, uh, I, w- I want to capture what you said. No, no I, I do want to make sure I'm clear. I can't. I don't want to say if you're following Jesus, should you be pursuing the active so, gay lifestyle? The answer is no. Right. But do you should? Will you still struggle? Yes. Will you still fall? Yes. In the same way that everyone else has struggles with sin, and and just like people who are straight still struggle with porn or or even, I mean, let's let's just be honest. Sex, even outside of the context of marriage, is a sin. Right. Like, yes, I said the word sex like five times on this podcast. <laughs> Deal with it. So I want to, I want to capture what you said. And then since you answered, Good luck capturing so, so since you answered part one and two of my question, I'll just ask. So the same question. Now we're good. Then. But, good uh, good, I, got you. uh, I want to, so what you're saying is, is that, uh, our main focus should not be telling the, the gay community that they're sinning, but, that they're sinners in need of a savior. Exactly. Mm. Just like you would anybody else. Right. And that's the thing is a heterosexual, homosexual, exactly. it's all treated the same way. And that's why I actually don't think there are different sins. I think there's different consequences for sins, but it, it's the same idea. Of well, I think we're that, all sinners who need a savior. I that's think just that, where it stems down. To. I think so put it well when he said that, um, I, I get where so was coming from with that though, because each sin I could sin and it's a sin unto myself or I could sin and it's a sin unto myself and somebody else. Right. You know, if I looked at pornography and I'm a single person, that's a sin unto myself. But if I go out and have an affair with a married woman, now it's a sin unto myself and us to several other people. Yeah. And let me clarify, you know, when I say there are different, um, that not all sins are equal. I'm not saying, I'm not at all saying that homosexuals, are more difficult to save. No, no, no. Yeah. Or I, that their sin can't is, be forgiven as easily. Or, right. It, it, I mean, it's still sin that can be washed away by the blood of Jesus. And, you know, and I would just point, I would, I want to make this point that, uh, 
you you mentioned about a can a Christian be can a person follow Jesus and still struggle with same sex attraction? Well, sure. Hang on a sec here. I'm trying to capture his first. You guys are jumping <laughs> the gun on me here. I, it's like, man, I got these great questions. We're and you guys are just like jumping me. So hold that thought because we're going to come back to it. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I, I got I, a really good, I, I got a good I zinger I know you here. do. You got a zinger? <laughs> so hold on to it. Don't lose it. But so I want to finish. Take a, do we need to take a break and get more caffeine in us before Sosha gives us our zinger? No. no? I want the okay. zinger before. <laughs> but I want to make sure that we captured everything that Mark said um, yeah. and answering what I think what Sosha was trying to say with that is that... Um, all sin is deserving of separation and, uh, and death yep. from God. That's that's what it is, and that's what Soche is saying. And then he's also saying that different sins affect us and others in different ways. I think that's what he's talking about on, right. on, yep. on different levels. Yeah, I just levels. want to make sure we don't get into the whole mortal versus venial sin. Right, no, right. no. Beliefs, that's, and, and, that's and, it's, and it's sin comes from different places. Like, it can come from a different root. Right. Yep. Different and the source. root matters. Right. Okay. Keep, so, keep, keep trying to capture so, Fuller. I'll, I'll capture so I think, to, I, think I captured capture. yours. Let's now let's move into Soche. The two part question. Please don't choke me. <laughs> with with my with his, with, yeah yeah Fuller my club <laughs> on Labor Day. Fuller decided to do a house project and <laughs> about cut my fingers about, off. Yeah. Well, you about cut your fingers off and then you rolled your ankle in like the matter yeah, of like was, two minutes. Yeah. I'm a mess. Anyways, and you got a baby coming <laughs> any day. Um. So. Should Christians, this is part one, and then I'm going to tell you part two, and you can answer both. So should Christians focus on the sins that are in the life of unbelievers or just focus on that they're unbelievers and give them the gospel? That's part A of the question. And then B, once you're a Christian, how do you, because obviously those desires just don't go away. I mean, I've talked to many Christians that still struggle with that and they abstain from that just like you would abstain from any other sin. But it takes a time um, for your desires to kind of match God's just with it, like anything, with any sin. Uh, so how can we uh, encourage Christians from there uh, to follow God and not so much focus on one sin, but on all aspects of sin that we should abstain from? So, you know, thinking about Christians addressing sin, you know, there is a certain level of addressing sin that has to take place because what are we needing a savior from, right? We have to discuss sin and we have to discuss God's wrath against sin right. to discuss the gospel. However, like Mark said, the gospel is not be straight and you'll be saved. Right. The gospel is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And we we believe in a gospel that is by grace through faith alone. And and the the goal of the gospel is not to be I I really like how you said that's that's a, a soft form of prosperity gospel and it is. The goal of the Christian life is not to live a certain life of the American dream of a you know a wife and kids and a picket fence like that's not the goal of christian life um and and as far as christians do once we become believers dealing with the sin i would say it's possible god can take those 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 uh Urges away even yeah I don't quickly but it's probably not the norm I don't want to put God in a box say so right do anything so. it's not the norm right. we'll say that for sure um, and I would say and this is the point if our identity as image of God is at the center of why God made us He made us to He made us to image Him to be His representatives on this earth and we sullied that with sin. And the goal and the, the one, not the only goal, but one of the goals and one of the glories of the gospel is that image restored and that identity restored. And, you know, one of the issues with the LGBTQ plus community putting their identity in their sexuality, one of the issues with that is that's you can be a human who's fully fulfilled without sexuality. Right. And I think that's that's one of the issues is this sexuality is at the core of who I am. But 
is it necessary to be a true human? And I and and the scriptures say no. Right. Which is hard because psychologists would say that's a typical building block. Right. But who was the most perfect human who ever walked the earth? Besides me? Right. Besides you, Mark. And Fuller. <laughs> and you. Elijah. Fuller. No. Jesus. I'm going to go with Jesus. Jesus I'm going to go with Jesus. That's what he I was the most wrong. perfect human who ever walked this earth, and right. he was not a sexual being. Right. He did not have any sexual contact with any person. But let's let's be clear to make sure about this is, I mean, the Bible even says he was tempted in all ways. So right. the man had eyes. He lived a life without sex, a sexless life, and he was fully human. That's, you know, that's what the creeds say, right? right. He was fully human. And the Apostle Paul, the greatest missionary who ever lived, was never married. He lived a sexless life. Right. And he was a full and fulfilled man, a human man. And so our identity is not wrapped up in our sexuality. Our identity is so much greater than that. It's one piece of the, and, and you know, the, Jesus talks about uh, in the age to come, we'll neither marry nor be given in marriage. Right. Uh, so in the age to come, there won't be any sex either. Right. And we will all still be human. You know, we will all still be fully, hu- we'll be even more fully who we are then than we are now. And there won't be sexuality. And it kind of goes back to the Westminster Confession, which I know you love, where what is man's chief end? And it's to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's right. So I want to wrap, I want to land the bird a little bit here. Land the I, bird? I never get You to mean land. land the plane? No, I want to land the bird. You throw out some bird seed, it <laughs> lands the bird. <laughs> wait, did, wait, wait, did you do your zinger yet? Was that your zinger? Was that, was that the zinger? Okay, I liked it. It was good. Oh, that was a good zinger. I don't make sure. I don't want to. I don't want to miss the zinger. But I know we're I coming up it. on time, so I want to wrap up and throw my last. Bro, we already passed it. Let's keep going. I want to throw my last two cents in here. So I think I can wrap up everything in two scripture verses and a quote. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say. All that's right, a bold. That's a all bold right. claim. Second Corinthians five twenty says, "Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg on behalf of Christ." Be reconciled to God. So that's my my first scripture. My second scripture uh, is Ephesians four thirty two. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. Read that again, Fuller. Ephesians four thirty two. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. Read it again with your Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got caught me off guard on that one. You just want to hear me talk more, I think. I I just want to hear the accent, bro. (laughs) It's not a very good one. (laughs) Are you going to do it? You going to do it? You going to do it? Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. I love it. What's the quote, man? (laughs) And then the quote comes from, I think, every Christian's favorite author, C.S. Lewis. There you go. Mm. It says, the Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good. Because he loves us. Oh, Dude, read, read that one again. Not with the accent. I just read that one again. The Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because he loves us. Mm. So I think in those two scriptures and in that quote, it sums up and summarizes how Christians should deal with the homosexuality community. We're ambassadors. We should love and forgive them just as Christ has loved and forgiven us. And none of us are good, mm-hmm. and it's only God that makes us good. I love that 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 passage there where it talked about we are ambassadors calling be reconciled to God. Right, like that's the issue. Not be not reconciled, reconciled to, to being straight. Right, not reconciled to doing a certain way, but be reconciled to God the Father, the Creator. Right, right. Be reconciled to your Creator. So that's all I got. That's how I wanted to land. Before the bird. we, before we, before Elena hit bird. But any any other thoughts before we close with you, Soche? Yeah, Soche. You're good. I'm good. I know you're a man of many words. I have, so. <laughs> yeah, I have many words. No, and and I want to at least say this. I don't. Uh, you know, we've we've gotten some flack when we do these types of conversations on the podcast. Fuller, we've been cussed out many times. We've been ripped up it's and down. Been a it's been, it's journey. been it's been interesting. Um, but, and let's be honest, what, 99.9% of those people didn't even listen, so they couldn't say nothing. But, um, this conversation, you know, it's hard to wrap up this conversation in 55 minutes. And I think the conversation can still go on. And and that's something I want to encourage even those who are listening. And this is something that we behind the mics always do is 
let's keep having the conversations and let's let's keep loving the world and right. let's let's keep being who we're called to be and we're we're called to be ambassadors. We're not called to be the saviors. We're called to be the ambassadors of the savior on behalf of God. Exactly. Right. So I think we got at least a good bow put on this 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 little present. But you so. know, well, I hope so. But before we end, we always do something. And eventually, I'm going to put all of these into one like boop, 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 boop. One at, right after one after another. But do we have a fun fact today, Fuller, to end today's podcast? So, in lieu of the conversation, I I, I don't know where you're going. I with this. pulled up something that <laughs> you go get us in trouble. It's kind of funny. All right. Oh, so here's my fun fact for the day. High heels were originally worn by men. Did you guys know that? I Wait, that's the fun fact. I Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain oh, there's more. I must say I'm right. like you can't just end with that. But did but did you, either one of you guys know that? I did. You yeah, did? I did. So, Shay, I can't get anything over on you. I Anyways, have no clue, man. Uh, in the 10th century, men in Europe adopted the now classic fashion choice of heels to make it easier to ride their horses. Adding heels to their boots made it easier to stay in the stirrups. Boom. That. Boom. It's my fun fact for the day. Good thing I don't ride horses. <laughs> <laughs> or else you may be wearing high heels. Oh, goodness. Well, hey, either way, Fuller, it was fun. So say thanks, thanks for coming so back, sure. man. Yeah, man. We will be back with the next installment of Real Talk Christian. Peace. See you guys later. Thank you for listening to Real Talk Christian. To help get our podcast into the ears of other people who need to hear these conversations, we would love for you to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. To keep the conversations going, feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and share our content with others. See you next time.